I'm on my way to VW Claremont. I'm gonna go and check out one of the cars and give you a, a nice breakdown and review. It's a car you guys have all seen, but perhaps give you a different perspective. Hope you enjoy. So this is the Golf uh, 8 GTI, I think you guys are all familiar with it by now. Really cool colour, I'm going to drop the, the specific colour for you guys. I think I'm actually quite a fan of the of the look, I know not a lot of people were fans of it initially. Um, but I think it's, I mean, you know, as all cars it has to evolve. And yeah, just a really, really awesome look. This one looks quite, uh, quite subtle in this colour, but again at the same time, it is a, it's a very clean colour. So guys, we've got Tino from VW Claremont. He's just gonna, I'm gonna ask him about the car and you, you know what it's, what he finds interesting about it, what sees best qualities. We don't wanna really focus on the negative stuff, but sort of a tour around the car. So this is Tino, I'll ask you to keep the mic. I'll keep the mic. Um, yeah, maybe just kind of show us around the car. Maybe just an explanation of what's what, what are some of the features. Okay, so I'll start on the right hand side of course. On the right hand side, on the doors we have uh, your control, control panels for the windows. We have um, the misters for the, for the mirrors of course. Mirror adjustment, you can bring it in, take it out. And on, moving closer we have of course the touchscreen lights. It's not the... VW used to have the, the knob where you turn it, it's no longer like that. So it's touchscreen lights, automatic lights, there's the misters, everything like that. Um, there's rain sensors as well on this vehicle. Then we have the leather wrap steering, GTI steering wheel, uh, fully touch sensitive steering wheel. Over here we have a um, heated steering where you can heat up the steering. Um, in this cold times, of course. <laughs> I, think, I think one of the things people didn't necessarily like but also got used to was the new type of button. The new type of button. Yes, touch sensitive. So you it's you can either touch it, press it down, or you can slide it. So it's slide volume, or you can just bring it back like that. Okay. But you can also press it down. You can press it. It's actually a button. That's pretty cool, though. Infotainment uh, system. You can change the view to what you want it to be. It has built-in navigation, so it can display navigation, whatever you want it to be, of course, on the cool. with your view. It's got a slightly bigger screen also, I noticed. Yes. Than, like, for example, my But car. bigger than the infotainment, the normal infotainment, which is 7.5. Mm -hmm. uh, this one be a bit bigger, I think it's 8.3 okay. on the infotainment. Touch sensitive over here. This is air conditioning, um, climatonic, uh, right and left. And then we also have the volume for the infotainment system so that's how the normal setup looks for infotainment you can swipe it and that's your home button this over here will be your home button you have heated seats so you can press over there you can heat up of course when you drop it down you drop down the temperature but so it's both sides i think it also has seat coolers isn't it yes 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 so here we go that will be heat up and cool that's why you see it's heated there and you see a fan on that side so that will mean it will heat and it will cool that's a sound system in there harmon card and sound system right in on it, but yeah that's fine nice. also adaptive charging is cool of course oh, yeah. um background lighting so you can change the light to what you want it to be so we can make it blue we can make it green so you see the, oh, the dash will change to what you want it to be and the other color is that for the for like the doors on so yeah you see there's ambient basically. light in there so if it's on the dash it will be the same color in the door okay yeah that's actually quite cool so it's sort of under it's under yeah and all the caps that's really nice it's also quite comfortable. I mean, yeah. it's big it's, enough. But it's big, yeah. yeah. The car itself, I mean, you know, I think even, I haven't sat in the back, but I mean, the, the seats itself is quite, it's a sporty seat, so it is quite comfy. Um, but the, the car itself feel, it feels very really spacious. 
um, and even I didn't drive it, but I drove with you, but it moves. Even yeah, in it the moves, tr- yeah. You can see it's quite <laughs> responsive. Um, and it's actually really, really cool. Um, and then obviously like your sunroof, what's a GTI without a sunroof? And then we also have touch into the opening. So you can touch it like that to open, slide back, and to open up. Obviously, it again, takes a bit of time to to get used to again. Yeah, from the buttons, of course. Mm. But I, I, don't know, I always think of it like in a sense of you have to evolve. Like you can't yeah, keep of course, everything yes. as, you, you know, as, <laughs> as it always same. was. Yeah, uh, and I definitely. think that's something people don't always kind of understand. And that's what VW was going for on this car, mm. on this. Yeah, they even changed the gear knob, so it's a fingertip gear. I was gonna say, yeah, what gear knob? <laughs> yeah, so it's just up, it's just up and down. Um, of course, auto hold, electronic handbrake, all the cars are push to start, so keyless entry, and then you don't put it in park, you press park. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go for a test drive shortly. Um, I will not be driving it. I don't think they trust me just yet. That's fine and understandable, I guess. I only drive a Polo. So, uh, yeah, you never know. might find myself in a Golf HGTI one day, if it's good enough, uh, if the ride is good enough. It feels very smooth, eh? Yeah, it is. It's uh, one actually. It's a drive, like it's a firm drive, but it's. For sports goal. Well, yeah. The firm, but. Sports goal, yeah. I think even like the road noise is quite quiet. Mm. It's a, it's a safe pull, man. Yeah, it's, it's like it's it just it's comfortable. It's, um, it's fast, but it's it's comfortable. It doesn't feel. It's not dramatic. It's not. Oh. I always say like it feels safe. I feel safe when I'm driving this car fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Oh, you can't come here. <laughs> I wanted to, I was very tempted to, but uh, like I say, a person does that then. Yeah. There goes everything. But I'm psyched to see how the video and the, the focus is going to come out. Me too. I um, I think a car like the, um, the color of this on a day like this looks nice. How's it guys? So okay, my review and my experience of the Golf 8 GTI. I know it's been out for a while now. Um, where I was hoping to 
to review the Golf 8R. Unfortunately, that car went straight to the owner um, who isn't in Cape Town. So I wasn't able to, but it would have been great. But Golf 8 GTI. So, you know, I think the GTI and the Golf brand has always been, um, you know, a good platform. Uh, I, I, as far as I understand in the Golf GTIs that I've driven in, I can't necessarily fault it. Um, I know at the point, you know, people used to describe them as relatively sluggish. So I drive a Polo GTI and, you know, for its size and, you know, for what it's worth, it's actually quite nippy. Um, but it felt very different. I wasn't driving the Golf, so, you, you know, but sitting there as a passenger, it was quite comfortable. Um, it's very nippy and it's nippy, it's smooth, it's responsive, it is, um, it's comfortable. Uh, so you can feel that it's firm, um, but at the same time the seats I think are, are relatively comfortable. So it's not sort of like the hard bucket seats um, like I have in my S3 for example. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a, it's a good car. Lots of features. I think the one downside, if I'm allowed to say, and I should, is that um, it is expensive. You know, it's expensive because there's a lot of extras that you then have to take out. Um, and, and that can amount to quite a bit um, but you know the one I looked at that one I looked at um, and drove in this morning um, that was 840,000 and um, you know I, is it worth it I suppose is the question and I think in my view for the type of car for the bold quality the type of good, uh, ride you're gonna get um, German engineered in, in its own right I know there was sort of a period where people also spoke about the reliability. Um, I'm hoping those issues have been tended to sorted out. But is it worth that amount of price for a German sports vehicle? I'm going to probably go with the answer and say yes it is. You know, if you have 840,000 or in money in that region, I think it's a good buy. Um, it's not going to really depreciate in value too much. Um, you know they always hold their value for relatively long periods and um, yeah if you look at and compare it to what you'd get for you know for that amount of money um, then perhaps it is a really good buy do many of us have 840 850 000 for a car probably not um, <laughs> probably not but if you can if you're willing to spend it then good for you go for it um, I, I think it's a good buy I, I saw Golf 8 art for sale for for 1.3. It's a very yeah for 1.3, and I don't know what the the, the the price was when they came out, but that was the price I imagine. Um, cars aren't cheap anymore, and and I think we need to start accepting that. And um, if you're going to buy something cheap, it comes with some degree of compromise. So you know, thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, I'm hoping that I'll get another opportunity to do more reviews. 